you know, an upset housewife, really, just seeing children um, and the reports with all the misinformation and um, just got dragged into it. And obviously she, um, obviously she regrets and breaking right now, Lucy Connolly, the wife of the conservative politician Raymond Connolly, has been told that she will be sent to jail for a significant custodial sentence after pleading guilty for sending a post on X on the day of the Southport massacre that was claimed to have stirred up racial hatred. Now, I have very strong views on this one. Yes, the tweet was despicable it was wrong but she admitted that very soon after posting it she said that it was in the heat of the moment and i think it is completely wrong and despicable that this woman is currently a political prisoner behind bars locked up she has been held on remand until sentencing in weeks and weeks time all to prove a point in slippery starmer's two-tier britain she is a childminder. She is a mother of three. And up until this situation, her rap sheet was completely clear. So what the government and what the justice system is trying to do is make us all terrified to speak out on current events. Now, in a searingly honest interview, Raymond Connolly, who is a conservative councillor, and let's be honest, that is a big reason behind this politically motivated witch hunt against his wife, spoke out today outside court. Let's watch what he had to say. I'm kind of relieved, actually, it is um, all over. Um, these last few months have been quite traumatic for Lucy. Um, and the children. Um, the stuff I hear on the TV is not really Lucy. Um, she's probably the opposite of what she's um, having to admit to, but um, she knows that um, she's overstepped the mark and there's consequences for it. So hopefully it, she'll be able to learn from this and um, move on with her, her life. What has she said about it to you now, reflecting on obviously what happened and what she did? It's just uh, a moment of, uh, you know, an upset housewife, really, just seeing children um, and the reports with all the misinformation and um, just got dragged into it. And obviously she, um, obviously she regrets it. She did a couple of hours after she'd put the link up, but obviously it came back on a, a week or so later. And then obviously underneath it, um, and her husband's a Tory councillor, and here we are today. Does she accept that the tweet was racist? I don't think, she's not that, she is not that person. I don't, I don't, I'm not too sure really. I mean, all I know, she's not that person. She's probably the opposite to what, to that actually. She really is. But she is the collateral damage in Two Tier Cares UK because he wants you, he wants me to be scared about what we post on X. Now, the Patriots of Britain have actually been protesting across the country outside prisons to try and raise awareness for what has been an issue completely ignored by the mainstream media, which is why I speak about these poor folk rotting behind bars for social media posts now. Because whether you agree with the posts or not, and I certainly don't, we just saw Julie Sweeney there, she's serving 15 months. There's a whole load of these wonderful people who made one mistake, one mistake. Some of them posted a meme and they are locked up. I find that so despicable and so wrong. And the BBC today, the British Bashing Corporation, claimed that Lucy Connolly had called for asylum seekers' hotels to be set on fire. She didn't do that. She didn't do that. She said she didn't care if they were. Now, that is wrong. We all agree that is wrong. But how can this woman be locked up? How can this woman be jailed? When just two weeks ago, we saw a child rapist set free. When we have seen 
pedophiles avoid jail. When we have seen people who have killed people on bikes given two-year suspended sentences. When we have seen judges admit that they have to release murderers early to lock up Lucy Connolly, the housewife, the childminder of a conservative politician because of a feisty tweet on X. No, nah, this is wrong. Father Phil Harris, what do you make of it? Oh, so justice and mercy. Um, my, I, I, this just really upsets me. And I think there's one um, sentence that I, that just listening to her husband, um, in a moment of outrage and emotion, I put, posted words that I know were wrong in every way. So that was that was um, Lucy speaking. But the context to that is because we lost our own son, any children who get harmed, she will kick off. So here is a mother who lost her son, who um, and my problem is here that when this whole scenario happened, there wasn't integrity and honesty of telling people exactly what had happened. And so there was misinformation online. This woman, bless her, in her pain of losing a child, relive that in that moment and put something out that was wholly inappropriate. But it does not come anywhere near some of the crimes, the heinous heinous crimes that have been committed by these people that are now going to be released. Now, that is not justice. Uh, and this is about an agenda to stop people speaking out. But there's another piece here where she has been incarcerated until she pleaded guilty. And, and, and she's been locked up until she pleaded guilty. And, and, and then she's still locked up. When she is uh, and, no danger to the public. Oh, she is no uh, danger to the public. I am so upset here as, you know, as, as a Christian minister who just compassion. Where is compassion and decency? You know, and, and yes, she said something that was woeful. But this, our nation is better than this. Government should be better than this. We, we just should be better than this all the way round. And we've forgotten who we are. We have forgotten what decency looks like and what justice looks like and what mercy looks like. But what's happened to that Labour councillor who was inciting violence? That. Well, uh, and, uh, and, that <laughs> and also, that... remember Manchester? Um, there was that, that guy who was set on a policewoman and, yep. and he actually okay. got let mm -hmm. off. Well, yeah. he hasn't he hasn't been charged yet. Nick Lowell's, who spread false but why information. Why not being locked up? Well, indeed, and Nick Lowell's from Hope Not Hate, who spread false information about an acid attack. I was on his hit list, Nick Lowell's, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 he hasn't been arrested at all. And by the way, that misinformation directly led to violence. There is absolutely mm -hmm. no exactly. evidence that Lucy Connolly's post on X led to any violence at all. Yeah, exactly. Now that's not accepting it, Andrea, but she's a mum of three. I mean, what would you have done if she was one of your constituents? Oh my gosh. Well, I'd be there fighting with her. And, yeah. um, yeah. but likely, you know, exactly what Reverend Phil said. Um, I'm a mum myself, you know, my little boy, Dan. And I do, lovely you know, boy. I mean, what she must have gone through, the pain in life, and she's still going through, she's yeah. suffered enough. And then to lock her up when she's no danger to society, it's in a bad place. It's in a sad place, this country, and it breaks all of our hearts, actually. So, so yeah. Andrea, do you not think that just locking her up, is it, that's all woeful and horrendous, mm. but to then release real criminals yes, so that she can be locked up, I know. There is something so very, very, very wrong. Completely, yeah. Very, very... This, this I, is... I mean, I actually... Um, as you know, Dan, I've been speaking out on this so-called far-right stuff um, since the election. Um, and I've got former constituents who are thanking me. You see on some of my posts on uh, on social media, thank you for speaking out, Andrea. We don't. 
Yes. We, 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 we don't speak up about this because we're, we're worried about our jobs, our family, our livelihood. And that's a terrible place to be in society. And that's okay. why I view Starmer as an authoritarian. Well, Andrew, just speaking into that, I'm having people coming to St. James every week now because mm -hmm. I spoke up. Uh, and, and the message is very, very simple. You know, the church hasn't spoken up. People don't speak up for us. And we cannot speak up. And I had someone in church on Sunday said, I can't speak out. I'm a head teacher. But first, guys and girls, you know this is the best time of the year, right? Football is back. We're talking Premier League in the UK, in the US, NFL Sundays and college football Saturdays. And with that comes the glorious grind of fantasy football lineup. So this is where your inner manager comes alive setting the perfect fantasy roster, screaming at your TV and making last minute waiver moves that either make you a hero or the guy everyone ridicules in the group chat. You know, I've been there. But listen, while you're over here making sure your fantasy team is dialed in, don't let your personal grooming become the guy that gets left on the bench. Because let's be honest, nobody wants to fumble their grooming routine. That's where Manscaped's Performance Package 5.0 Ultra comes in, acting as your all-in-one grooming playbook. From keeping things sharp down below with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra to taking care of those rogue nose and ear hairs with the Weed Whacker 2.0, this is the lineup that will keep you looking and feeling like a champ on and off the field. Clean, confident, and ready to dominate your fantasy league. The Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra Groin and Body Hair Trimmer is the franchise player of your grooming roster with precise trimming capabilities. It's reliable, efficient, and gets the job done without fumbling. Whether it's for date night, a weekend tailgate, or just everyday grooming, this is the tool you want on your squad. And then let me tell you about this, the Weed Whacker 2.0, because... We've got to be honest here, no one wants a surprise nose or air hair making a guest appearance on game day. So the Weed Whacker 2.0 handles those details like a pro, keeping you neat and ready to go. No missed tackles in your grooming gang. And look at it there, what a product. The Performance Package 5.0 Ultra doesn't stop at grooming essentials. It also comes with two free gifts. The Boxers 2.0 Midnight Bravo and the Shed 2.0 Toiletry Bag Premium Gear to ensure you're always ready for action whether at home or on the road so join the over 10 million men worldwide who trust manscape and get ready for kickoff by heading over to manscaped.com use the code outspoken for 20 percent off today that is 20 percent off and free shipping trust me you'll be drafting the real mvp of grooming this season uh, dan uh, you need to set your own uh, sorry reverend phil you need to set your own podcast up don't you think and actually tell <laughs> weekly stories about this as a way to to actually fight back on this on like you said totally. common sense you need to do that um reverend phil because it's needed yeah and i think it, it's very powerful as a man of the cloth like yourself to to do that yeah i completely agree yeah I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just heartbroken at the moment i really am uh, I, you know this is th exactly. this this and i think the other part is that where they took the interview with her husband uh, and with Councillor Raymond, and they said, so is she racist? And so everything is either far right, racist or xenophobic. Uh, and, and that's, you know, and, and how, da how dare someone ask? It's just, it's just well, wrong. I, I mean, as Daniel has been the same since 2016, anybody supported Brexit have been all labeled these words. And, um, Thick as mints, for example, you know, we, we, we anybody who's far right is thick, the racist, the bigots, um, rather than demonization. Actually, common sense who love our country. Yeah, it is demonization. It is a war on the working classes. It is a war on the honest, hardworking people who have made this country great. And it makes me so angry. And I look at these people and I feel so horrendous about the fact that they are locked up and that there was political outrage about what they did yet we saw the most despicable carnage at the notting hill carnival resulting in two deaths these two lovely souls killed because they attended the notting hill carnival and the mother there on the left i mean utterly horrific it was in front of her three-year-old daughter the pain that she felt in those final days because of the way that she was attacked at the Notting Hill Carnival. 
And over the weekend, Dame Andrea, we saw such weak condemnation. I mean, Sadiq Khan did not speak out on the violence until two people died. He said nothing until the two people died. Same with Yvette Cooper. Shame on them. Oh, completely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I, 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 the, 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 this, you know, I was just looking before the show today, Dan, and just looking at this lovely woman and the circumstances of her death. I was just sitting here going, oh. She had her whole life ahead of her, didn't she? Uh, it, Andrea, exactly that. Dame Andrea, that, exactly that, and just gone. And, mm. uh, and, and, uh, and nobody just. You know, we've got the post of Lucy Connolly in clink, you know, and we've got all these, you know, horrible crimes. Every day there's a stabbing and nobody is... And Sajid Khan has never, ever been able to control it. And why the heck did the public vote him back in? That's what I find quite outstanding. Well, it's I probably think... low turnout as it has been while we've got a Labour government at the moment. Yeah. 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 It's, it's just the whole Notting Hill scenario. That no, was so oh, depressing. Oh, so depressing. Well, well, look, is, Dan, um, oh, sorry, you go, Father Phil. I was, I was just going to say the problem is, Dan, again, if we actually speak about Notting Hill because of the origins of Notting Hill, you're thrown in as being racist again. And, and, and you know, oh, I, it's just, this is just heartbreaking right. stuff. I mean, look, sorry. if this was any other event, if this was any other event, it would have been banned years ago. Let's be honest about it. Yes. But look, this is all quite depressing. I appreciate that. But do you know what I think the antidote to this very often is? comedy we have to sometimes laugh at the surreal nature of what is going on in the uk and i want to lift the spirits too so the brilliant dapper laughs i don't know if you've heard of this guy he was a really great comedian he was thrown under the bus by the cancel culture mob woke itv effectively ended his mainstream career but he has now started to take on in such a brilliant way the madness in the UK at the moment, wrapping up loads of the issues we've been discussing today in the most hilarious way. Watch this. In the life of an Englishman, now picture this, you're in London, it costs more than you earn to live here, so you're slowly accumulating debt. You can't afford a holiday, so you're addicted to drugs just to fucking escape your life. Oh. <laughs> the weather's shit, the people that live here are even shitter and they hate each other with a passion and you can't afford to leave. There's homeless people all over the place. The shops are boarded up because of COVID. Anyway, you wake up one morning to find out your tax is going up because Labour's in. And this is after you, Les, the cost of living crisis, energy prices, interest rates have all eaten that last little bit of extra money you had left over each month from your wage and your outgoings. So now you're proper fucked. And while you're sat there on the toilet in the morning reading tweets from the Metropolitan Police about online trials and how they upset them. A SWAT team smashes through your bathroom window, straight past you on the shitter and goes into your 11-year-old son's bedroom and arrests him for shouting at a police officer. Then your sister rings you. She's recently got fired from her job as a doctor for refusing to ask biological men if they're pregnant. And she tells you that your grandma's just frozen to death because Keir Starmer gave her winter allowance to a country on the other side of the planet that's wealthier than us to help them with climate change. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's all getting a little bit much anyway. And you think, you know what I'll do? I'll nip off for a pint to relax. Maybe I'll sit in the beer garden and have a fag. But while you're doing that, you get barred because that's illegal now. So you decide, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for a walk to clear my head. Morning. And while you're on your walk, clearing your head, you get stabbed to death. Yes, stabbed to death violently, just walking around the city. Then the Guardian plasters your face all over the news for randomly jumping on a perfectly good knife 54 times that was held by a choir boy. Then your sister's enraged by this, so she tweets about it, she gets nicked. Your son comes out of prison, all right, and he decides, I'm going to protest it because my dad's dead. But this time he shouts at a police horse and he gets nicked for that. But the prisons are too full, so they let out Ian Huntley to put him in. Now, the mad thing about this tale is it doesn't even sound far-fetched anymore, does it? It's perfectly believable. I'll tell you why. Because it's all based on true events. <laughs> oh, this is our story. In the and sometimes you have to laugh, don't you? You just have to laugh. Dame Andrea Jenkins, the former education secretary and Reverend Canon Father Phil Harris. What a fabulous superstar panel today. So appreciate.
you've been here. Thank you so much for watching Dan Wilson Outspoken. Please do subscribe if you want lots more clips and interviews like that. Plus, if you want to watch our totally uncensored after show, then visit www.outspoken.live.